Minecraft recently released the most major update and most anticipated update as of this day on April the 1st, 2024, that being the Poisonous Potato update, giving us what we all beg for, including the new Poisonous Potato dimension. Well, today, I'm going to make the bold goal of topping that video by doing something even more anticipated, which is what all of you have been wishing for all your life, Jacksonian democracy explained in Minecraft. Now, first of all, yes, I know that this skin of Andrew Jackson is not historically accurate completely, but it was the best thing I could find. So don't judge me too hard, please. And second of all, the first thing to know about Jacksonian democracy, from what I understand, this is the most major thing, is that a big part of it is that all white males were given the right to vote, regardless of if they owed land or paid taxes or things like that. And the reason why this is major is because before, it was only people who paid taxes and owned land could vote. So if we walk in here, we see this nice little establishment, nice aristocratic home, lovely furniture, probably owns some land, pays his taxes, he's a good citizen, has the right to vote, fantastic stuff. And then if we come over here to this house, well we see that villager number two is probably like crashing on his brother's bed staying over at his brother's house or maybe he's paying rent or something like that like for example if you're a college student nowadays you're probably living in an apartment so you don't own any land he does not have the right to vote and the reason for this is because strange as it may seem the founding fathers were worried about too much democracy they were worried that if everybody had the right to vote, then there would be the mob rule where, I mean, all you would have to do is convince a ton of people who didn't understand things to vote for you and your policies to have nasty things happen, which sounds a little bit crazy, but that's what they were worried about at the time. And then slowly, in the early 1800s, States started to write into their constitutions giving all white males the right to vote, whether or not they owned land, whether or not they paid taxes. And this gave way to some very major developments, the first of all being, of course, that a ton more people could vote. Suddenly it wasn't this aristocratic top crust were able to vote, but it was just racist and sexist could vote. So then... The first few elections that were interesting, and that's where Andrew Jackson comes in, because for that election, there was an election where he won the popular vote, but his opponent won the electoral vote, and they had a third opponent who didn't win anything. And when there's a tie, it goes to the Speaker of the House. This is what is known as the corrupt bargain, for reasons you'll see in just a second. So it went to the Speaker of the House, the opponent of Andrew Jackson kind of hated Andrew Jackson, and so did the Speaker of the House. So then, according to Andrew Jackson, the, his opponent went up to the Speaker of the House and was like, Hey, guess what? If you allow me to become president, boom, I'll give you a job as Speaker of the House. Now, he didn't walk away like that. See, he's walking back. He gladly accepted that de deal. See, look, he accepted that deal. And he was made president. And Andrew Jackson was outraged at this. And so then four years later at the next election, he started just yelling, being like, this is against democracy. These people are horrible people. Look at what they've done. They've done a corrupt bargain. And at the time, it really wasn't that weird, because it was aristocratic. It was basically like, yeah, that's totally fair game. But to the common people, it was like, what the heck, bro? That's not right. And so then Andrew Jackson was able to win that election by a landslide, which gave way to some less than good things. This is actually an interesting thing, because, you know, the Founding Fathers were worried about the mob vote. And then, that's kind of what happened, because Andrew Jackson kept making promises, like, if I'm president, you see these Native Americans over here? 
We're going to force them out of their land, and we're going to take it for ourselves, which would later become known as the Trail of Tears. Very nasty stuff. And so, because everybody wanted that, they voted for Andrew Jackson, he forced them away from their land. There's a lot of strange things that happened in this time period. For example, it's very confusing to think about because it's called Jacksonian democracy. It's supposed to be this time of freedom, all white males being given the right to vote. And then at the same time, Andrew Jackson is like, give the power to the people. So give all the power to the president. So when the Supreme Court says things like you should not remove nations from the land that they've lived on for generations, he's like, well, I'm the president. I have the armies. So enforce the rules you make. Or else I guess I'll just do them. So that's what led to the Trail of Tears. It's a very interesting time period. It's just a lot of little things. I hope this video clears some things up for you. If you have any questions, I'll leave a link to some videos in the description from Khan Academy, who do a fantastic job of explaining it. Just not in Minecraft. And with that, have a great day, make good choices, and goodbye.